serious. What'd I say? What did I say? Oh, what did I say? Oh, the charmer got him. Oh, it's big. That is big. That is a big one. <laughs> that is a big snake. Good morning, folks. Welcome back to Cambo Trout Fishing. If you haven't already, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Now, if you're just coming to the channel, make sure you catch my last video. That's where I just caught my new PB, Northern Snakehead. And she came in at just a little over 16 pounds. I mean, she was massive. God, I was fortunate to catch that fish. But that was an east side trip. Today, I'm out here on the west side. Today, I may do something that I haven't done in a long time. Because for those of you who joined me for the Q&A on Friday night, you know I was asked the question, why haven't done a catch and cook in so long? And you're right, I haven't done a catch and cook in forever. But today, I'm actually gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead and do a catch and cook. Now you can see the recipe later in the show, but right now I just wanna get to the fishing. Now when it comes to the conditions I'm fishing today, I'm fishing post frontal conditions, which usually are not optimal. We had a lot of storms move through the area yesterday. From looking at the water here, the SAV, the submerged aquatic vegetation, it's done a pretty good job of keeping the water fairly clean. I still have at least a solid three feet of visibility and that's something I'm very happy to see. So now it's just gonna be a question of when did they last feed and how hungry they're gonna be as a result. I have my normal repertoire of lures. Um, starting with the buzz bait, I have my swim baits, I have my rivets, I have my snakehead charmers, <laughs> I have my chatter baits, I have my whole arsenal with me because honestly, I have no idea what's going to work today. I'm starting with the top water because top water is most fun. <laughs> and if they want to take top water, I want to give it to them. But what they're actually going to want throughout the day, who knows, man? Time will tell on that. In terms of conditions for today, we have what are gonna looks like it's gonna be mostly sunny skies, unfortunately, but that's typical of post frontal conditions. But this wind later on is gonna pick up and it's gonna pick up significantly to the point that the more open areas like this aren't really gonna be fishable. Not for snakehead. I mean, wind is probably the single worst condition for snakehead is high wind. So what I'm trying to do now is fish those areas that are fairly wind exposed early in the day and as the wind picks up, I want to try to be back inside of the canal system that's here. Because that's one tip for you, is that when you know you're going to be dealing with windy conditions, if you're in a cot... Oh, there he is! Fish on! Yes! Oh, it's a snakehead too. Oh, I should have taken my drag. Is it a snakehead? Yeah, it's a snake. That's a snake. Hell yeah. Come here, Ned. Come here, Ned. Yeah, that's a good eater-sized snake, man. That is a solid eater sized snake. So what am I doing right now that led to my success on that? Well, I'm fishing the shoreline parallel like I always tell you to. Because when you fish the shoreline perpendicular, when you're out from it and casting in, you can't really present, unless you're gonna cast like every five feet or so, you can't really present to all these different points and nooks and crannies. By fishing it parallel, you can essentially present to all of those points. And you can still point cast if you want to with like a top water hollow body or something like that to like some very lightly looking little cuts in there, but cast parallel and you can present to a lot more of the shoreline at the same time. Oh, I left my lip grippers at home. What an idiot. Oh, what a loser. Oh, this is gonna be a chore today as a result. Well, folks, today you're gonna see what happens when you don't have lip grippers when you're snakehead fishing. It's going to be a pain. Oh, it's gonna be a pain. Oh, there she, oh, she's off the hook. She's off the hook. I'm probably going to do some inadvertent early releases and lose some fish today as a result of my negligence <laughs> to bring my gosh darn lip grippers. 
but look, I, 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 yeah, I know, I know you're a fighter, but <laughs> there she is. It's so risky holding her up like this. There she is. All right, folks, I'm going to get back to the fishing. I'm going to add her to the stringer, take home some meat for my family and give you all that catch and cook. That fish came on the buzz bait, slow rolling it, just like I told you <laughs> on, on my live Q&A. I love slow rolling a buzz bait. And folks, <laughs> I'll get back to you with another fish. One thing I don't think I covered yet in the conditions report is that I'm starting the day essentially at a high slack tide. Now my plan when I first got here was to really beat feet. I beat feet, that's a military term for hurry up, man, <laughs> to run. My plan was to run and get deep up into these canal systems because there's a few points in there that are best fished at high tide. But it's also true that this particular place, this outer part here is often best fished at high tide. And why is that? Well, if you look in the water here, you see a whole bunch of hydrilla and there's only maybe, depending on where, you're, where I'm sitting right now, between about four inches to six inches, at most eight inches of water above the hydrilla. Now, snakehead love hydrilla, that's true, but once the tide really starts going out, there's not gonna be any more water sitting on this hydrilla. It's gonna make paddling through it a real chore, number one. Number two, I won't be able to throw the buzz bait over this stuff later because the grass will just be sitting on top. And while this buzz bait does pretty darn well with grass, you're not really gonna get any buzz bait to go through grass like that without picking up a bunch of stuff that's gonna turn the fish off and kill the action to lure. So I'm fishing it now because I know later I will not be able to. Yeah, there are a lot, and I do mean a lot, of itty bitty snakehead moving in here. I just lost one. You see all these bubbles in front of me? <laughs> oh, 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 you see that? Oh, I got him. <laughs> what is this? Is it an itty bitty snake or what? Look at that. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Look at this. <laughs> when I told you that there were a bunch of baby snakehead moving around in here, I was not kidding. <laughs> no, it's not kidding. And that's fun watching them shoot from all directions, man, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm gonna try to find a place that's holding some bigger fish. And I'm sure there's bigger fish out here, but I wanna get back into this cover before the tide really starts running out and it gets too shallow to fish. So I'm gonna leave those baby snakes to their fun. <laughs> and start heading back in here. Got another one. I think it's another mini, but she hit it as soon as it hit the water. Let's see if I'm right or if it's a bass. What do we got? It's a bass. <laughs> Species number two today, man. I'm telling you folks, these fish are hungry today. I mean, they are smashing the buzz bait. Large mouth, needlefish, snakehead. <laughs> they are busting. Oh, they're busting today. It's gonna be a good day. God, I'm glad I came out. Honestly, I think it's only a matter of time until another nice one. Come on in. Oh. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. God, this buzz bait kills it. Whew. That's why you cannot use anything less than medium heavy. Because when they grab it and they dive down into this hydrilla, if you have anything less than medium heavy strength on your rod, good luck getting them out. And even then, the rod I'm using right here is almost really a medium. I'm so lucky I got this fish. I'm so lucky. Look at all the salad that came with it, man. I'm telling you. You gotta use braid to cut through the salad. And you need at least a medium heavy rod if you want to be able to catch most of these fish you hook. Oh, man. That's a nice fish. Oh. Oh, yes! Here I am again, no lip grippers. So this is gonna be a freaking adventure. <laughs> you need lip grippers so bad with these fish. <laughs> I can't believe I left my damn lip grippers. All right, for better or worse, the hook is out. Most of the grass off, not all of it. 
Oh, what a strike. God, she crushed it. She crushed it on such a fly, such a fast hit. I didn't even know she had it. Now, like I said before, since I am harvesting today and I don't have my lip grippers, like an idiot, <laughs> I'm going to put this fish on the stringer before I hold her up to you. I think, I mean, I like to get one picture. And she, she is so rambunctious. Ah, so rambunctious. <laughs> oh, she is a monster. Angry. Oh, she's so angry. I don't blame her because, I mean, she's fighting for her life, but I'm just saying. She is angry. Let's get one good shot of her. There she is. That's a nice fish. That's a mid high 20s fish. I'm pretty sure I just spotted a fry ball. There he is! What'd I say? What did I say? Oh, what did I say? Oh, the charmer got him. The charmer, oh, it's big. That is big. That is a big one. <laughs> that is a big snake. And that is definitely my PB on the charmer. <laughs> oh heck yeah boy i love calling my shots <laughs> you beauty you all right and this is one i'm not going to be harvesting i don't harvest all fry balls i love the fishery a little bit too much for that and the fish but the fishery certainly they're protecting the future of the species. Now I'm gonna see if I can get a good shot of her for you, which is not gonna be easy, because again, I forgot my lip grippers, but gosh darn it, I'm gonna try. I wanna make sure y'all get a good view of the fish and me. Well, mostly the fish, right? <laughs> what a gorgeous fish. That's another high, high 20s, close to 30 inch fish. Ah, ah. No. I don't know if it's just me or what, but it seems to me that these snakehead are the most rambunctious when you catch them off a fry ball. Maybe that's because they're wired for protecting their young at that point. I'm not really sure, but that's a beautiful specimen. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> Get off my shoe. Come here, you. Look at that. I just love seeing them swim in clear water. God, so beautiful. All right, so I really don't need her in the net anymore because I got the view of her for y'all that I was trying to get. So all I really need to do now is get over here and find her fry ball. And her, there's the fry ball, there's the fry ball. Eyes on the fry ball. Now, just in case, just in case there's still a protective partner over there. Let's put this in and see if I can draw one more strike. I mean, I doubt it, but you never know. So it's definitely worth a shot. I'll give it one more, just in case she's hanging out in these weeds over here. I just saw her moving. Yes! Oh my, oh, that was a beast! That was a big fish. <laughs> oh, that was a big fish. That's why you check. That is why you check. All right, let's see if we can get some good underwater video for you guys. Every time I get video like this, <laughs> I feel like I have to second guess myself if I actually want to do the fishing or just go diving with these fish because when I get the opportunity to see them in water this clear, it just makes me think about the possibility of being able to swim with them, man. <laughs> Let's get her released now. But this was the, the last big snakehead that I caught today, but it doesn't mean it's the last fish I caught. I got some nice bass out here. I got a lot of bass out here, actually. Among the bass, I also got catfish out here. The catfish actually came home and he deserved it too, man, because I thought I had a really nice bass or snakehead. Ended up being this 
darn cat. <laughs> but I also saw my buddy Mark Little out here as well. But that pretty much wraps up the day, so let's get to the cash and cook. So folks, I told you earlier today, we're actually gonna do a cash and cook. So I'm gonna leave the recipe links in the description, but essentially what I'm doing is this. I made a creamy Cajun shrimp and sausage last night. Delicious, <laughs> freaking delicious. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna take those leftovers. I'm gonna fillet the snakehead that I call today, put those snakehead in a foil packet, and then put the leftover creamy Cajun shrimp and sausage inside the foil packet and cook the snakehead. Now, the only thing I might do is just in case is remove the shrimp first because you don't want to overcook shrimp. When you overcook shrimp, they become very rubbery, very tough, not very good to eat at all. But in terms of imparting the rest of the flavor, I'm gonna leave the rest in there. <laughs> I'm also gonna salt and pepper the fish, but beyond that, I'm gonna let the flavor come from the creamy Cajun shrimp and sausage. Let's get to it. It's looking kind of done. Look at that. It's looking kind of done. Let's see what we got here. Are you going to flake? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh my God. Look at his videography. Videography? Oh my God. Geography. Here. Trade it up. Trade it up. No. Videography, girl. Videography. Claire, why are you so crazy? Bird comb? Bird comb? Oh. Mm. Oh. Rampage, you poor dog. You poor dog. That's so good. I know, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to eat more now. All right, get it, girl. All right, so folks, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the fishing. Hope you enjoyed the catch and cook. Remember, check the video description for all the recipe information. And we can go back to watching Adrian enjoy her bites it's and delicious. morsels over here. <laughs> But folks, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Please like, share, and subscribe, and y'all have a good one.